So, for example, on the body, I'm going to have different color. The eyeball, I'm going to have a little more shiny color, a uh, shiny surface. Can you see this different? So, yeah, you mean for the eyes. For the eyes, yes. So now, by default, you guys probably see this. You don't, even though you don't have, uh, even, even though I have a color on it, but I can turn it off. So look at on sub two. These are Boolean, right? These are Boolean. And this is visibility. And then the paint brush. When you turn it on, it will show a poly paint. Now, in ZBrush, poly paint is literally paint on the vertex. Let me turn that off. Oh, here we go. See? It paint on that vertices. It's not on the flat surfaces. And um, in OpenGL also, like video game, um, the map are painted to the vertex. So basically, when you bake the map, the, uh, um, um, it used the UV that match with the uh, similar, um, uh, similar information to the vertex and add color on it. So we literally paint the color. And, um, oh no, paint on the vertex. Uh, let me show you. Let me turn this off temporarily and just talk about the basic first. Okay. So I'm going to insert sphere. Okay. So right now, see the wireframe of this sphere. And if on the sphere, let me rearrange a little bit so that you won't get confused what I am. So I'm going to focus only on this sphere. OK. So now, if I turn on a paint brush right there, I'm going to turn off poly paint. And I'm going to assign the color. Right now, it's white color. I can change to how about a little yellow. Here we go. And you can follow along if you like. So turn on yellow. Now we need to turn off. Z add, even though it's on, it will not do anything right, uh, when we grab the color. Now, the RGB is the color. The MRGB is mean you want it to modify both color and material at the same time. We don't use that. You can switch between just only material and then color. Let's do color first. I'm going to flat the color, yellow color, on the surface. So you go to color, fill object. And before you fill, you can still change the color you like. You see right here, color picker. And fill, make sure you turn on RGB. Color, fill. Now, you fill with that yellow, uh, I, yes. Um, make sure you turn on paintbrush right here on sub two on that particular tool, yeah. and then you choose the color, and right here enable RGB. No, and before I added the color, like when I was modeling, was in red instead of gray. Oh, oh, oh! You just change the material to uh, basic material. Okay. Yes, <laughs> and those are not apply yet. These are just more like a default shader. So, and we're going to change the, the, the shader. So now you paint color. So now change different color. I'm going to go with red. And this is the, if you consider this in Photoshop, this is a floor, uh, floor, uh, floor ground color. This is a background color. So now ZBrush doesn't call that. It's called alternate color. So this is the main color, and this is the secondary color or alternate color. Yes? Is trapping, you try to move an object. Oh. And is there like a shortcut key to a switch between the two? All key. When you pay it, make sure you turn off. Can you see? When you yeah. hold Alt key, um, and do try it again. And, um, 
maybe after make sure when you insert if you don't insert if you start a fresh one just add sphere for example and then make poly and then save right away Then it just crash? Yeah, it just crashed four times. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll help you on that. I'll look at it. Uh, make sure you save on D drive, on the the computer drive. Okay. So. On both my, my and Android D drive. Yep. I mean, while you're working on it, while you're saving, it has to save on D drive. If you save on the thumb drive, that might cause it because of. Okay, I'll, I'll help you later. So, you might want to just switch the new file just to practice. Okay, so now, if you are on red, when I pan, can you see? It's not much detail because you can see it's basically is pan on vertex, just on the vertex. Now, if you want it to pan more smooth, these objects need to be higher in resolution. So to do that, if you don't convert these two data mass, you can subdivide it. However, for the sake of this project, let's do data mass so that you won't get confused when to do subdivide, when to do data mass. Just focus on data mass. So same model, geometry, data mass. Now 128 will be really low too. So, but we can try, let's try 128 first. And now you might need to hold shift key so that you can soften a little bit and then read in a mash. Now, let's try paint, make sure use RGB. Now, can you see it's smoother? Because if you look at on the wireframe, it denser. Now, if it's not smooth enough, we got to bring this up. Let's say it 400. That's quite a lot. And you might have to try to read in a mesh. You might need to turn on polyframe so that you can see. Now, when I read in a mesh, it doesn't do anything because it need a little touch up to activate the model. So if we hold shift key, shift key still enable F. So now I'm going to so smooth a little bit, let go, and then read in a mesh. Now it's come back. So now you can turn this off. Now you can blend color using shift key. So let me try, uh, how about blue? I'm going to just pan it first. Here we go. Now if I hold shift key, you can blend the color. However, if you add on, it will smooth your surface. So turn Z add off, turn it off. Now, so that we can focus only on color. So now I smooth it, smooth the color. Let's see. I can try to blend them. Now, the intensity of the color you control by this RGB intensity. So if I reduce, now it's a little lighter. There we go. And yes, anybody? Okay. So. So I reduce the size, and then I can smooth, hold shift to blend it. It's not perfect, but it is. Now, you might see the fact set because I didn't smooth the surface. So if I t hold shift key and then turn on the add, I'm going to change the black side. I can soften the model and soften the color at the same time. If you don't want to touch the color right now, when you hold shift key, just turn off RGB so that you just modify only the geometry, not the color. And that's the basic. Now, what about the um, changing the material? To change the material, you pick the material you want first. Let's try a plastic, toy plastic. Here we go. Now, it's a little shiny there. We can actually modify, make it less intense, uh, less shiny. So now we need to apply to it. To apply the same way as applied flooding the color. So you uncheck the color, 
turn on material only and intensity bring it up 100% because we want to apply a full um, shader on this one and go to color just use the color menu fill object once again we wanted to apply the material so you need to turn on M turn off RGB go to color menu and fill object so now this surface has that plastic if I want something different on different object let's say that I insert another sphere and I'm gonna turn on move I'm gonna move it aside okay so right now switch to right now this sphere still takes up that shader and can you see the highlight looks really awkward it's just because of such a low resolution that's all so if we convert to data mesh let's do 400 like what we did with the other one turn off blur oh, wow and and then I'm gonna soften a little bit soft the geometry here we go so now to change the shader I can pick let's try just a basic standard here we go and then you need to apply turn on material channel button color and fill object with the material here we go so now change to color or uh, change to this we need to turn on paint uh, under sub 2 oh my sorry on still using this color I can change How about a little purple now if I want to fill the color to get the best color I need to turn off material turn on RGB color fill object there we go. and then you can start it to paint and now when you paint turn off C's up and you're gonna just use standard too when you you paint here we go so you can sample some of this color if you hold C key and then just tap that red Oop. here we go and now can you see I can hold control uh, C and click and then huh. here we go sometimes doesn't pick oh okay I, I know what happened um, sometime this is moved to the uh, uh, to the black color here we go so and nothing much to it at all actually on the pan it just take you time now let's come go to our uh, if you have a uh, lion head just bring it I'm gonna delete this delete it here we go so on the lion head I'm gonna assign a basic shader and then the eyeball I'm gonna assign a um, um, reflective surface sorry turn on paint brush I already have the color on it I'm gonna override it so I'm gonna override the color to white color about just a little orange here we go so turn on RGB 100% I want to just flat that color color fill object here we go so it's gone I'm gonna go back to my eyes each eye and you can all click on the screen too if if you wanted to see a, a basic shade you can turn this off temporarily here we go see that so now let me click I am on this up too I'm gonna turn this on I'm gonna fill with a little white color like gray on the eyeball and can you see when you change the color it's kind of updated on the surface that uh, on the sub tool that pen uh, poly pen is off these are just the default display color that's it 
So that's color I want. RGB. I am on this eyeball. Color. Fill. Now I'm going to go to the next one. Alt click to select that sub tool. Color. Fill. Here we go. Now for the shader, I'm going to switch RGB off, turn on material, and I'm going to pick the shader. I can start it with um, just something. I'm going to just pick toy plastic again. There we go. And I'm going to fill only the eyeball and material. Am I, am I on the right eyeball? Here we go. Okay. And then color fill. Here we go. I already add that. Let me pretend that I did not. Here we go. So you're probably going to be just like this on the eye. I'm going to change to plus toy plastic color fill. And now the head, when I turn this on, I can change how about basic material and then color fill. Here we go. So now there are two color, uh, two different shaders. So now I'm gonna paint, gonna active the head. Now when I active the head, you might need to check your resolution, turn on polyframe. If I want to have a little more smoother color, I can bump this up a little more. So right now it's 300. I can go up to even 600. ZBrush can take that. Right now, see, it's only uh, 600,000 point something. So I'm going to have to hold shift, touch up the surface a little bit to solve, and then read in a mesh because it might not act here. So now it's really dense. Here we go. Okay. So, so it's mean if your work at home, um, 2 million might it, it use graphic card so it might slow down and also use the memory system on your system the, the physical memory not the not the hard drive space hard drive space using as a part of it like a virtual patching file and that's why i don't want you guys to work directly to thumb drive if you have external drive still kind of okay it, it just need a space on the hard drive to save file if the file size are 10 megabyte, it probably needs about 100 megabyte to just page, uh, to catching the memory and then save into it. So it depends. So now, this is gonna be, some system gonna be really slow. So I can try paint that color, turn on RGB, turn off the uh, uh, material because you don't want to modify the material. And I gonna, how about reduce a little bit if you have tablet pen, will will be way better. Here we go. So I'm gonna look at on the reference a little bit. So it has a little light color around the eyes, a little bit up there, here. So, and I think I paint too much. Let me undo. Okay. Shift. And I turn on symmetry. So under transform, active symmetry, and X. Shortcut is X. And, then here. Okay. and I'm going to do it quick. So I kind of uh, get the overall, oh, overall color. And I'm gonna make the brush size a little larger and reduce the intensity. I I just use my mouse at the moment because I want to show you that if you don't have a tablet pen, you still can. 
work with a uh, mouse. There we go. Okay. And now, when you go lighter first, you can just like overlap color. Just need a little bit. Mm -hmm. And um, because these are fair, you're going to have to kind of using contrast of the color to sculpt the form a little bit. Uh, for example, like on the cavity, uh, cavity or something that concave in, you can change the color a little richer. And I could get into the eyes a little bit. Let's increase. There we go. Uh, to to when you add a darker contrast of the color, it just helps to uh, give a little more defin uh, definition of the form. Like here, I would try maybe a little tinted blue color, reduce it, okay. and the nose. And another thing is, um, let's expand the divider, collapse the brush just one click. I want you to try this. Under light, grab this switch. Drag and drop into that. So now, right now, this is, I, I have two lights. You can turn on and off. So you can have more lights right here. So right now, default lights, your default lights might look different than mine. And see, you can move the location of the light Oh, I was on the wrong one. Here we go. Can you see it changed direction? Mm -hmm. now, now, when you render, you want it to think about studio lighting. You have a main key light, can be any angle, and then you have fill like you have a back lighting to separate the background. Now the fill light in 3D, I mean, in real photograph too, the field light can have, you can have more than one field light. Any area that when you take a photograph that looks gray or flat, black color, you want to add lights into it so that you use the light to sculpt the form. Same thing as when you do rendering in 3D or something like that. So right now I need a little light on this side. If I do a snapshot, like take how about like here? So, so now because of the 3D, if you want to do like this, these sections are too gray. We can test render right here. BPR, BPR stands for Base Preview Render. So you click on it, and that's it. Now, I have I went to set up something on my BPR already. So you might be really sharp shadow. So it's OK. Now, if the shadow, let's talk about that a little bit too, because this is going to be part of it when, when you render this out. So on the tools palette, I'm going to collapse one click. And under render, grab the switch and drop in here. You can drop anywhere on the divider. It's totally up to you. I just want them to be there both, light and here. So now, under render property, this is how you uh, tell ZBrush that what you want. You want shadow right there. There we go. And there's a wax preview. We don't do surface scatter. This is like a skin for you know, like human skin, things like that. You can try to turn on wax preview, and then you can test, render, see how it looks. It's kind of give a little translucent 
on the surface. So I don't want that. I mean, you could if you want to. Now, we want ambient occlusion to be on. Enable it. Because ambient occlusion will help, will help to kind of craft the uh, any cavity, anything that concave inside. It helped to get at that shadow like a real light here. And um, so now pretty much it, the detail, we don't have much detail at all. If this look good enough, it's good. If it's not, you might want to bump this up to higher detail like five or even more. It basically has more anti-aliasing to the surface. So right now I'm put it to four. Oh, I think that maximum is four. Okay, it's not five. So now, and that's it. So the next thing is you play around with more lighting. So I can click, right now I select the second light and the position is right there, but I am, I, I am not turned this on yet because to turn on it has to be uh, highlight as a orange. So I'm gonna have to click one more. Now it's up there. Mine is a little slow because it's two million polygon now. And I has been setting up the color. So I um, I like to use a cool color. Actually in light, blue is warm color. Yellow is cool color, so it's cabin temperature. But under shade, I would go with a little light blue or something like that. You can experiment with it. And now, if you are not sure where the location of the light is lit, what you can do is you can isolate this light by turn the first light off and just focus only on the second light so that when you render, you will see where the direction is. So now it lit up on the bottom. So it's good. This section will not be gray, but hey, what about that? Well, I can add another light on it. Now I choose intensity two, and I change the light type to spotlight. If it's sunlight, it will be infinite color, infinite lighting. Now spotlight, you will have to increase the intensity a little higher to, to make it brighter. Now if I reduce to one, here we go. So I render again, use base BPR, here we go. So now, actually this is not bad, a little darker. Now if I add the main key light, I'm gonna turn it on and test render, see how it looks. So it's not bad. I still can see gray, but I think this light, second light is right on the bottom, not on the side. So I need extra light to the side. So I'm gonna turn off key light because I want it to be able to identify, see if it lit, see that section are too dark. So I'm gonna turn on the second light, the third light, turn it on. And now this is, the location, so I want it to be right on that side. Let's turn the second lights off because it's hard to tell. Here we go. So it's kind of go to that direction. Right now, this is point one and spotlight. By default though, because I changed it already, you might get sunlight. Sunlight will be brighter. So I want it to be able to control the, the volumes of intensity. Now, or ambient, I like to turn it off because in real life, we use ambient just to fake bounce light in OpenGL because in real life, every surface are bounce light, bounce the color, like uh, the monitor bounce to your face and then the table has, if it has Chinese surface, will bounce that color of the table up. So any flat color will have less bouncing uh, energy. So now I'm gonna turn everything off except for the third light and test render. See if I can see that light. That's good. I could see 
let me try point five. I don't want it to 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 be too pronounced. Point five is good. Now I'm gonna add second one and test render. That's good. See, it's not flat. Now on the top, it's still flat. Well, I can add more, but let's take a look at the key light first because key light might lead that area. Now render again. Here we go. So I got, I actually still look gray, right? Because of the contrast is so high on the bright. So I think I can bump that up a little bit. So go back to the third, I'm gonna do it one. And then the second one is already feel bright enough. This section though, maybe um, light angle are not able to cast on that. You can add another light and then just project into this trajectory, like the fourth light, to just lift that section up. So let's try render. I already bump up on the side one, on the left. I can see now. Now, um, the core shadow doesn't show up much at all. It looks still look kind of flat, don't you think, right here on mm -hmm. the screen? Because there's no core shadow. When we talk about core shadow, is uh, let me hero scuro. Hero, hero, keep bro, keep bro. <laughs> Sorry, keep bro. Skuro. Oh. Skuro. 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 Gosh, I forgot the spelling of Kiro Skuro. Kiro. Kiro. Not chick. Kiro. Um, is, is it, it like, like C H I R? -O? Here we go. Oh, Kiro Skuro. So. Yes. Okay. Um, Kiro Skuro lighting. It's a Italian mm -hmm. language. Here we go. This is would be. How about that one? Okay. So, oops. Highlight. And this is the highlight will cast on the local color. And then there's a highlight. The, the size of the highlight is depends on the shape of, your, uh, of the light. And then you have shadow and reflected light, cast shadow. Now the bounce light will lit right here. Oh, this one is better. Here we go. So if you think of this, this is the widest of the radius, right? Uh, the diameter, the, the radius, the widest. So if we don't have about lights, the light hit right here, this is the large area. The rest of them will totally flat black color. But because in the real world, there's a bounce light. So now in 3D, it doesn't have that, except for using a uh, ray trace engine. It's help to calculate the bounce light. The, and um, so what happened is um, when the bounce light hit, the energy of the lights that bounce are less than the key light, you will see this darker, but you will see the core shadow. The core shadow is lights cannot get through that edge. That doesn't make sense about core shadow. So now mm -hmm. when you rendering in 3D, you kind of want to do that. So this is, could be that the light angle are not good or the fault lights are too bright. So what I can do, I can play around by changing the key light 
so that they go to a site more. Now, it's kind of giving some sense right here. That's the core shadow if I rotate. Can you see core shadow as shift? It's just mm -hmm. because of the angle that's the, uh, that's the widest. So it's like when you think about a flat hand, if the light casts on here, you will get a shadow that shape of the hand. If the hand are rounder, you will get a little blend and then you will see core shadow a little better. So that said, that's the concept of studio lighting. And um, basically you have to fake light more light, it's better than low, uh, than less light. Oops, sorry, I forgot to turn off. Okay, I think I'm gonna stop. You got an idea already. And now for the eye painting. Now, oh, how to take the render. The easy way is after you render. Now, when you're done with this, oh, th there's one more thing. Uh, BPR shadow. Here we go. By default, the ray probably 10 or 15. I don't remember. I increased to four. The reason is I want to soft the shadow edge. So let, let's render again one more time. Oh, I was on the not preview. I want to be. Oh, hold on. Render. Here we go. Oh, wait. Let me change the angle. I think I have more light now. Okay. Look at right here, that shadow. So it's control right here. Ray, when it's less, let me put to five. And I'm going to change the angle to zero. So the ray is like the resolution, how many times we'll calculate those, five times or 10 times and so on. So now when I render, it should look worse than, can you see? Not worse, it's sharp, so five. Mm -hmm. If you want it to soften it, you can try to add angle first. Let's go with like two and increment. So now if you do less ray, rendering faster. If you higher, you get better detail, but longer to render. So click again. So now I add angle. Angle will help to solve that edge. Now just a little, let me go a little crazy. Let's do 10. Just want to show you the difference. Here we go, see, softer. And um, also affect the, it's kind of blur because what the, OpenGL engine does is, is fake the map. So look at the directional of the lights and then fake shadow map on it. So when you add more angles like blur, not, not blur, this blur is to solve the radius pixel, but it, it, it doesn't give the look same as the angle. So I would, if I were you, I would use angle, not blur. So now, if you see band, let me go a little crazy, 20. I want to show it to you. So if you see band, like bands on the shadow, can you see it like that? Because you have to increase the ray and reduce the angle. So if I do 40 for the ray, I should have less banding on the shadow. A little less, but I'm going to have to bring that down to 10. So that blur a little less. And when it blur less, not blur yet, it's just blending the shadow, and then the surface become too dark, just bump this up bump the lights up, like from five to six, something like that. Now, let me render, let's pretend I finished rendering. And then we go back to the eye quick. So 
Now to save this file, the quick way is you using document export right here. The quick way. And then you can choose JPEG or PNG. I'm going to use JPEG. Let me image. How about test pen zero one? Okay. And then when you use JPEG, you get this window allow you to cropping if you want. So now when you look at on the composition, vertical might be okay. If I want horizontal, if the angle are going to the left, I would give a little room to the left so that his, uh, uh, her eyes, if you look at on a um, rule of third, if you draw the line divided to three sections, like one, two, like one, two, and three, the line should be made right here. I can't draw it on here. Do, do you know the rule of third? Okay, so I don't need to explain that. So I keep a little breathing room on this side because the direction is pointed into the left. So I click OK, and it's saved in my folder. Right there. There we go. So that's it for rendering. And um, now there's another way to save. For this time, just keep it only one area, document export. That's it. So that less technical at the moment. So I'm going to collapse the light because I don't need it. Now, if you need to change, like um, when we do sculpting, let me turn all off. This is a little tip for doing sculpting. Okay. When you do sculpting, come on. Okay. I'm going to add one light. Use sun. There we go. Intensity to one. Oh, I did not turn on. Here we go. So now, when you do sculpting, light can help to check. Hey guys, if the lights are go backward, you can alt click. One again. Here we go. Can you see when alt click is flip the uh, the light to back and front. So now, if I put it on top of the head, here we go. I can see the volumes on the eye. If I want the eye socket to be deeper, I can tell right away that this is not deep. So this is how you use light to check when you do sculpting. And you can check on the bottom. Here we go. So the bottom, the, uh, the cheekbone and the lid is work okay. I think I should try to work with the uh, I got to look at on the reference. Oh, actually, yeah. It doesn't really have a uh, deep on that eyelid, so never mind. <laughs> so this is a, another tool that you can use, light, to check your sculpting. Check the uh, flow of the surface, something like that. So I'm going to turn it off and turn regular light back. There we go. And any questions about light? Okay. Okay. So now I'm going to go back to the eyes because the eyes, in order to paint really high resolution, you need to bump it up really high. Okay. So I'm going to. Check the geometry. Now I already increased 300. I don't think it's enough. Can you see the point? I would go six. How about 600? Double it. So 600. Let me collapse that. 
I don't need it. Thank you. So I'm going to have to read that image. Here we go. So now it's 52,000. That's good because it's small, small shape. So turn this off. So now I should be able to paint a little high detail there. So RGB, I'm going to press O on my keyboard to increase or uh, to reduce the focal shift or the fall off. And then I can, I think I'm going to go with not black, a little dark. I'm going to use dark purple first. And then I'm going to light it up with, here we go, Oop. intensity 100. Now, if you want to be a circle, like right now, I paint, right? So you can change the stroke to drag. So now you can drag that circle. There we go. I look at on the tiger eye, uh, lion. So they're kind of big round. And I think let me drag more. I can grab. Oh, right here. Okay. <laughs> so I got that. And now I can turn off drag to dot or free hand. I mean, dot. When we don't add the step, you don't really see dot. It is step. So free hand is just no step. So I can increase the changing color. Then I can there we go. let me soften. I'm gonna increase the up, uh, increase the uh, focal shift. Oh, I undo it. Hold on. Here we go. And then okay. And then I'm gonna lighter and lighter and I can hold C key and sample that purple again this time I'm gonna change to drag but drag a little smaller there we go it's, if it's not sharp I can reduce the focal shift Here we go. And then I just keep going in and touch up the uh, the detail of the eyes. And I think this is okay enough. And um, did I not put, okay, I'm going to have to change my material. Somehow it's not showing up on my. So I'm going to turn on M changed oh i switched to a uh, basic material and don't worry about the color it's just a uh, because of the lights i'm gonna pick toy 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 Oop, no, no 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 where is the toy toy plastic here we go and i'm gonna fill color Fill. There we go. And why my I'm gonna use basic material. Color fill. Okay. So and that's it. The rest of the time you can play around and you can uh, paint more color. I'm gonna do it, but I'm gonna use pen. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna save this. Control Shift T. I'm gonna call paint. Lion. My is six B. Lion. Oh, I should do. Okay, any questions, guys? I think that's it mm -hmm. for the lecture today.
and the rest of the time just ask my uh, ask me for questions if and I'll help around. Okay. Yeah, I'm still working on 